Hi. There's another handout today. Um, do, do people have it? It's called a data sheet. It's it's a, when I'm, I planned to hand out uh, actually last time, but it's it tells uh, what the whole course is is about. And uh, the main thing I think some of you will be interested in knowing is the purpose of the course and the, and the method of grading it. Um, and so the uh, uh, just wanted to reiterate something I said quickly before that the main thing in this course will be that we'd like you all each to write a term paper on a subject of your own choice. And uh, this has the uh, there's an extra gimmick here that I don't mind. In fact, it's fine if you if you also had to write this paper anyway. The, the, the main thing is that, that that now you get an extra incentive to write it very beautifully. And uh, somebody talked to me on Wednesday that he's uh, he's writing a book on physics and uh, and it's OK to turn in a chapter of the book for his term paper. That's all right. Yes. Uh, but you don't all have to turn in that much. Uh, I was thinking though, it was something about 10 to 20 pages. And the main thing that you should know now is that on Wednesday, November 18th, I'd like to, we'd like a rough draft, so, um, uh, so, something that can be turned in for for the sake of criticism and uh, and, and review uh, before it's too late to change anything. And uh, the the main thing is uh, that you should have um, a good uh, something that you're interested in writing and you have a good idea as to what as to as to a kind of form that it's supposed to fulfill. It doesn't have to be any specific form. When I say term paper, it, it could be any uh, really all kinds of different things uh, are, are possible. Um, I was uh, I was thinking of having a, a contest for the for the best Pascal program that was a, also a sonnet. Uh, uh, now that would probably not be the best for this course, but I'm, uh, that's a form, you know. That uh, if anybody read the, um, uh, the Golden Gate, uh, the uh, novel with all the table of contents and everything is in 14 line stanzas and so on. Well, you should be able to do that with a Pascal program too, right? Uh, but um, uh, there are many different kinds of forms that you have, as to, and uh, and one of them is a chapter in a book, one of them is a, is a journal paper, one of them is. Uh, is a uh, exposition of um, something that you think ought to, ought to be explained well. Uh, some uh, you should have your audience in mind who, who you're writing it for. It could be uh, it doesn't have to be um, uh, me at all. It could be any any particular kind of audience that you that you uh, have firmly in mind as somebody worth worthwhile that uh, that you want to write something for. But that's the the main thing is uh, uh, that that you that you have some specific genre in mind, but I don't have one in mind and, and just do a good job on whatever on whatever that is. There's a uh, there's another possibility I should mention is uh, computer programs, uh, uh, a well written computer program with with documentation um, is uh, is a kind of literature that's uh, uh, that of course that's probably too hard to do that. Uh, I mean, it's it's not as e it uh, but but any any kind of uh, technical uh, t technical writing it would is is okay in this term paper as long as it's um, as long as it's uh, not 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 trivial I guess uh, I used to assign my my kids uh, the, I, I said they should write uh, 50 words it w originally it was a week in order to, or I'd turn off the TV set and and, uh, and they had to turn in their essays and then it got to be a hundred words and so on my. My, and my, uh, when my son discovered uh, once he, he wrote about the 49ers game and he said in the first quarter the 49ers scored seven points and the other team scored th three points in the second quarter the 49 and he got up to, and he got up to 50 words very easily that way um, so then I had to make a rule no, no writing about sports events unless you use varied vocabulary or something anyway so, um, you get the idea that uh, the, the idea in the term paper is something that you're interested in doing a good job and not just to, and not for me to really spell out the uh, for, uh, for formal requirements which you which you look over like a lawyer and and try to uh, to, to see to, 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 to optimize the minimum amount of time to do it. OK. <clears throat> Well, no. Lawyers actually try to maximize the amount of time. That's been done. <laughs> <laughs> OK. To minimize the amount of uh, something or other. They, they, maximizing is always the opposite of minimizing or minimizing the, the negative. OK. Um, now, uh, as I said, I, I want to go through the other uh, papers that were turned in. 
and uh, because they, they raise interesting issues. I think, uh, in fact, almost everything that I'll be mentioning here was, was something that at least two people did. Uh, so it's uh, uh, it's worth it's worth of, uh, worth noting, and um, but I do want to get through. Be sure to get through it all today. I'm not going to not going to drag on this whole course talking about uh, L of C and P, which can get pretty tiresome. So this will be the this will be today. We'll we'll have done with non-increasing vectors. Now, <clears throat> all right. Uh, let's see this one. Let's see if I can figure out what I did here. Um, um, I, first of all, I have a, there's a colon here. We show the contrapositive colon. We assume that and such and so, and so on. Uh, I um, now this is some, this is a, <clears throat> a point that I don't have much support for outside of my. But I but I've uh, always wondered should you capital should you capitalize the letter after a colon or not? And and um, and I, I'm and probably you'll get different people telling you different things. Um, and I've um, evolved something that's worked for me rather well in the past few years, and so and I, I, I suggested uh, to you, but if you don't like it, uh, you can lump it. Uh, the the uh, uh, and that is I, I capitalize the the thing after a colon if it's a sentence, if it's a complete sentence, subject and predicate. But if it's a fragment of a sentence that doesn't have that doesn't, then I leave it then I leave it lowercase. Um, so in this case, I would have capitalized the, 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 the we here because it's going to turn out to be a sentence. So that's just an extra clue to the reader that you know that sort of that this colon was, was actually a, a pointer to, the, to another sentence rather than a pointer to the completion of the, of the present sentence. Um, uh, question. A question on that? Yeah. Do you throw in an extra space before the capital letter and you do uh, that? Uh, well, actually, Tech has already thrown in an extra space after the colon. Uh, uh, it, it treats a colon and, and a period and a... Uh, uh, but uh, uh, that would help too if you're, if you're on a typewriter or something like that. Yeah, the, the, uh, a double space at, at the end of a sentence is is a kind of a neat thing sometimes. Sure, um, that's a. But uh, and, and then it would be even harder to put a lowercase letter then after after an extra space. No, no. That, that's a that's a, a thought. Then no. How about, how about if the sentence is like a less than b, where a and b and are variables in lowercase? What now? How about if the sentence is a less than a is less the than sentence a. is a is less than b that follows the colon. Yeah. That's that starts. That's a sentence starting with a symbol. Right. So you don't want to <laughs> I would rewrite it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, if it's displayed, it's okay. Uh, now let's see. I have a point here. One, one pass. No look ahead. Um, that's in the previous. It suffices to prove that L of C P contained in A of N C. Uh, not equal empty and C and A and imply uh, imply grunt. Okay, so um, it's not clear when, when I was when I was uh, reading this that that this word imply would change the whole the whole ball game. Uh, you know, it's we. It suffices to prove that, and then we do listing things, and all of a sudden I was going to you know I was thinking that I'm supposed to prove that that L of C and P is is contained in this, and but I'm not really proving that. I'm proving that. The, you know that all of this imply that, which which is uh, impossible, I think, to read this sentence uh, without look ahead, and so some some way of giving a clue to what was happening. Um, you know uh, that the the three conditions L of C and P so on imply. The, then uh, if if you if you say uh, uh, if you say that it probably helps a little bit. Anyway. Okay. Um, now let's see. There's another thing that's very common. I think it's probably because uh, let's see. I put some in here. Unfortunately, this format is wider than our TV screen. Um, what do I have? An and? Oh, I. I sorry, I can't remember why I said C. Oh yeah, here it is. Um, we have b i less than b i plus one for some b in p, and i and one less than or equal i less than n. Now I would have put an extra sum in here and sum one less than or equal i. Uh, it it's a, uh, some people don't like to to say sum and then give a relation where the where the the object of the sum is is i, uh, but um, depending on our audience, it would be okay. 
I think, to make that much of a But here it looks like almost this, this, this is confusing without saying whether you, you want all I or, or some I in this range. Uh, I, I think that uh, that's hard to understand what you mean. So so you have VI for some B and some I. Uh, in, and I, if you want it to be completely clear about it, you'd say and some I in the range 1 less than or equal I less than N. Uh, <coughs> And then, let's see, then k greater than or equal 0, comma, because c is contained in a sub n, comma, and hence such and such. Um, I just thought the word and here was a little bit uh, wordy. Um, uh, it just, uh, for me, the, the, the flow, would, would I would have crossed out, I would have said, then k, be, then something, because something, hence something. Um, the and, hence, uh, didn't, uh, but I can't explain why I just... Uh, thought that would be a small improvement. Um, okay, here's another. Here's an interesting thing about commas: um, uh, uh, the lack of them. Observe first that if L of C and P is a subset of A and then so is C because C is okay. Um, now, there's, this is a complicated uh, uh, German. I guess they would call it a Schachtelsatz. It's not, Schachtelsatz is not quite saying, but. Uh, it's a box. It's a, it's got a lot of, of things because it, first that if something so then so is because um, I, I would uh, at least put a comma after C here in order to in order to uh, take a breath and and uh, we got uh, certainly putting in too many commas would, would would spoil it because you wouldn't be you'd have to rewrite the sentence you, you, you would it would get so in, it would it would sound as involuted as it is but if you leave out the commas you can you can at least read this at high speed and and it's, and it's uh it's simple enough to to uh, internalize but then you need a comma at least uh, there's if then and because all that uh, that was that was I think going a little too much there um, uh, here it says to that end assume by contradiction that remember we had this the trouble the other the other day um, uh, there's, there are nicer ways to, to say uh, we're going to uh, prove something by contradiction, and we'll, we saw some examples already, and there'll be some more coming up. Okay. Otherwise, this was actually rather good. Oh, yeah, one more comment on this. Uh, um, the end of the proof. Uh, I think Paul Helmich was the guy who invented this idea of having a symbol at the end of a at the end of a proof, and it's, it's pretty nice in a textbook, actually, when you know that uh, something about the structure there. You don't have to say QED or, um, or saying this completes the proof and so on, so you can just put this little, this little symbol there. Um, and um, I would have just put a little space between the period and the symbol, but, and there's sometimes people use a solid bar, but uh, anything like that is a, is a, fairly, a fairly good idea. Uh, but there, but uh, why why does it follow the period immediately? That's, that's that doesn't seem quite right to me. I don't know. Uh, minor points, obviously, uh, mixed up with some other that are more important. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, I like this. Uh, now to prove a to prove this. Uh, let us assume the opposite and see what happens. Um, I think that's kind of nice. Um, why do I have where in there? I don't. I, I have a note here that I can understand. Forget that. Um, okay. Now let's see. Um, and. Uh, Sometimes there's a question: Should we put the word that in there? Now, Nick. Now, to prove that P is, in, let us assume the opposite. Um, here, I don't feel a need for it, um, and uh, I, I, it's a matter of rhythms, things that I don't fully understand. But, but uh, here was a was a uh, situation where it sounded very nice uh, because every uh, uh, maybe it's because prove is a one-syllable word and. Assume is a two-syllable word. I don't think that's it. Um, but uh, now to prove that P, it wouldn't, wouldn't be bad to put a, the word that in there, but it sounds okay to me now. So, sometimes I feel strongly that I've got to put the word that in, and you'll, 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 I, I hope I don't get too hung up on it in this course. I'll kind of have to bore you with it too much. Anyway, the main thing here, though, was a, was a kind of a nice um, uh, 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 break in the, in the action, saying, see what happens. Um, 
it's sort of let's let's do an experiment. That's kind of that's that's a reasonable thing to do, I think, to show the method of by which a proof is 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 sort of this unrolls by itself instead of instead of afterwards. Now, now this you can do if if the proof is is simple like this one is, if it's if you had to. If you had to let all proofs unroll by themselves, then you couldn't prove very complicated theorems sometimes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> that. Let us take as given that such and such and p and, and c and equals zero. We will show that this implies that c is contained in a and a. Um, there, sometimes there's too many that's in a row, and it's too bad. But uh, we will show that this implies that. I would. May try to get around it by maybe saying both or something. I would say that I would, we will show that this implies both. See something. I don't know. Uh, something. I, I I I do feel a need for a beat in here after the word implies and uh, perhaps. Uh, but there but there is a. You can also put in that so often it um, gets it gets uh, tiresome. Um, now here's a. Present tense. So I thought so I was going to talk a little about tenses here. We assume now that P is, is such and such, and, and will show that this leads to a contradiction. So we got it. So so now we got this, and then later uh, this will lead this this uh, the, uh, the, this was going to we're going to show something. Um, uh, and um, um, Somehow it's read, it read awkward to me because because we're mixing tenses. We're assuming you know the the the, the we is being is, is omitted in the second part of the sentence. It sort of carries over the same subject, but here's the subject using once with the present tense and once with the future tense. Um, uh, so it might be uh, uh, better to say something like we assume now, hoping to show that this leads to contradiction or something like that, in hopes of showing that this leads. I don't know. Um, Hopefully. Um, oh, there's another handout, <coughs> and uh, th and I have a handout about hopefully that's uh, that, that's come, come here, and and uh, I plan to discuss this next week. Um, now, the uh, the thing I want to discuss about this handout, th there's some content to it. It talks about the word hopefully, but the main thing I want to talk about is the style of writing in the ha in the handout itself. This the form is much more important to me, and the way the the, the beautiful way this is this is. Uh, uh, th these these points are covered. These would apply to mathematical writing as well as writing about English. And uh, and so so the uh, I, this little this is a, a sort of a model little essay of uh, about uh, about how to write uh, 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 explain a technical point. Um, and the technical points that are made are also of, uh, relevant. But mostly uh, I like just the form of the of the writing. We'll talk about it next week sometime. Um, <clears throat> Okay. Now, um, uh, here was another case where em elements are are being, are, uh, you know, he, uh, could, would be better components again. It's um, uh, because we have elements and components both. We talked about that on Friday, um, <clears throat> and um, uh, and there was one thing he, that. Uh, the, the person here decided not to introduce the, um, the variable k in the proof, but to keep copying out ci minus cj plus 1 over and over each time, you see, in all these proofs, um, while the original had a k in there. Um, uh, and and uh, I didn't think that's a win in this, in this case. The formulas just get long. And uh, it's, it's easier to do a lot of the manipulations at, at a higher level with k. So I would have said. Uh, where, where v is defined as v equals c plus k u, uh, k equals c i minus c j plus one, uh, and I think then the rest of it, a lot of this case would have would have would have gone in here, shortened everything, you know, and and uh, and and we can recall the definition of k then when, when we finally get to the punchline, but carrying it all the way through the. Uh, all the way through is sort of it sort of uh, violates the principle of name and conquer that helps to helps to uh, make mathematics intelligible. Um, lemma one here I would have capitalized as I say it's the proper name. Okay. Next. Um, oh, here's something about uh, about tech again. Uh, there's uh, there's a. Uh, 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 
a – I would have put a tie in my tech file after the word of and before a sub n. And see how a sub n is a little – I don't know if it's called a widow or an orphan or whatever. It's all alone there at the – very much anti-climax by itself at the end of the – at the end of the paragraph. Now, there are places that – that people would not break a line if they were – if they were doing it on a typewriter. And this is one of them. And – and I made a study of – of what happened when computers took over the typesetting job in – in journals. And an ACM journal used to be done by hand where everybody would make a manual decision where to break a line. You'd push a button on this monotype machine and it would – and it – and it would – it would eject the line. It would be set in lead and go to the next line. And – and I counted the thousand pages of the journal of the ACM in those days as to how many times I found breaks like this with this anti-climax afterwards. And then I – I made the same count. I think there were something like four in a thousand pages. Okay. And I made the same count after computerized typesetting came in in the 70s. And – and it was something like 54. So there was – now, it might have been that people started writing sentences that had more occurrences of these things. I haven't – you know, I haven't really got a controlled sample here. But it seems to me that there – that something was done when people were using a human judgment on breaking lines that was lost. So I – I tie it together. Now, in – in tech, there's a symbol that we – if – in – in – in plain tech, there's a – there's a convention that if you – if you – that if you type a tilde instead of a space, then it's an unbreakable space. It's a space that will – that will be everything – every – everything like every other space except that the line won't end there. And – and anyway, I discovered that this was – that this was happening in – in – in computer typesetting that many times – this happens much more in mathematics and other kinds of writing. And it was – these – these funny breaks were occurring more often. And so – and so I said, I wonder, printers – if printers ever had a name for this kind of – kind of a space that you don't – that you don't break after. Is there a way to specify to the – to the best commercial typesetting system so that – have a space and don't do it? And I met a guy from New York Graphics who was one of – was one of the better – better composition houses. And he said, yeah, we call this an auxiliary space. And – and – and we sometimes use it. Then I – then I found actually some – some literature. I had to go back into the 19th century and – and found a French book on – on typesetting which actually talked about this, that you wouldn't – if you were mentioning Henri the Fourth, however you say fourth in French, you wouldn't break a line between those two, Louis XIV and so on. You would – and – and he gave several other – other examples where it would – would be bad form to – to break a – to break a line. So anyway, auxiliary space didn't turn me on, so I called it a tie. And – and when I – when I'm now proofreading a paper that I – that I've typeset or – or Phyllis and I see a place where – where I would rather not break there, I just put this symbol there and that means put a tilde in your manuscript and then – and then the tech won't do that. I think other systems are going to be getting this. And it turned out to be very simple to – to – to do this almost without thinking as you're typing. So I would have put a tie, for example, as I'm typing this, I would have put a tie there, usually if – if I have a – an and followed by one other thing, a subset of and to the end. I probably would have typed – typed an of there. And Phyllis does this automatically. Of P here, I would have put a tie. And – and a few places in the manuscript, I get to use that usually at the end of a sentence where there's a – where there's a one symbol thing coming in there. Sometimes, like if I had to put a tie here, I wouldn't have put it before the A sub N. I would have put it after the A sub N. I'd rather have the break after since, but – but I don't feel too strongly about that one. But anyway, there are cases where ties definitely help. This – this was actually – Question? Yeah. When you look through the thousand pages for awkward breaks, was it subjective or objective? I mean, did you have a spelled out criteria for what constituted an awkward break? It was – it was where I – where I – yeah, it was subjective. It was – I call it psychologically 
a, a, a bad break where where somehow it would it would be a, a letdown to get to the other end of the line and see that see that thing by itself. This was first called to my attention uh, by readers of the original tech manual in the late 70s when uh, when uh, I would be referring I would refer to chapter and then it would say one period and they said Don you got the best typesetting system but why does it do that and um, and and then I became sensitive to it and that's why I made my experiment. Why, why isn't it in tech automatically to take care of problems like that? Well, uh, it does. There is no automatic rule, I don't think. I mean, it's a matter of judgment. Uh, uh, okay, it's, if, if it's a very short, if it's a very short word, you can, you you could probably predict that nobody would want to break there. That's true. And uh, but that re really doesn't happen that often with a short word because tech has a pays a penalty for for the number of lines in a paragraph. So it much prefers to, to set a two-line paragraph than a three-line paragraph. So, the, so it sort of said, it, it sort of needed a three-line paragraph, but then it took the best, uh, the three, best three-line paragraph it could find. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't have this uh, on, the, uh, on the end. So, so uh, you, could, you could do that by setting your, your par, the, the space at the end of a paragraph and say that you don't want that to stretch so easily. It, it stretches with no, no penalty at all at the moment. But, but that's uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I I, um, I I find all that it occurs in the middle of a sentence as well as in the as as well as at the end of sentences. And and but it, it, it's in the noise level. It's not something that I have to even be conscious of after after the first at the first few times of putting it in. So so um, uh, um, anyway, it's it's something that that can be done for spit and polish. Um, now, this you can't see it too well on TV, but uh, but boldface is used here. Uh, these vectors are bold. The C and P are bolder than the other ones. We have a nice black. T uh, this laser printer was was had a real good ink ribbon uh, here. So that B is bold compared to the other one there. And so so a person's using that that aspect of typography. It seems to help a little bit uh, on this one, but it's not terribly necessary if you work with a, if you work with a lot of Vector. I don't know, it, it, but it did help, I think. And uh, I, I kind of like this um, this saying here: the the proof that p containing n is by contradiction. Remember, we had this problem of how to state this. Um, and uh, this is th this sets everything up. And uh, it's a present tense. It says it is by contradiction instead of it will be by contradiction. That's fine. Um, I, for which pi less than pj. pi and pj weren't, uh, strictly speaking, defined there. But I, uh, but I only had one real serious complaint about this, and that is uh, I said, oh, oops, when I got to this line here. Um, you see, here's two form formulas right, right in a row. Got to put some, something in there in between to, uh, to, to separate those, those formulas. Um, I don't know what would say. Component dj must be greater than or equal to n, um, but it's not too nice to have those two in a row. Other than that, this was fairly good. Still, I can't say it's not. <clears throat> um, okay, here's a. Uh, uh, what did I mark this parallel? Okay, we are given that such, by taking m equals zero and two, we see that such and such by transitivity of c, we have that. Um, uh, okay, two sentences in a row with the same thing, but there's a sort of a parallelism there. I, I, why the comma, the second one, and not the first? I don't, I don't know. Um, um, but I did. But this was 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 reasonable. I would have. Uh, I'm not sure whether these are new paragraphs or not. This uh, uh, it looks like each one is a new paragraph, but there's no way for me to, to really tell. But here I would definitely start a new paragraph w with this transition. Now we shall prove that p contained an n, um, and this leads me to comment about the word shall. Um, uh, the uh, the style of the art of computer programming that my copy editor taught me was to say shall when I'm making a definition. We shall say that. We shall call uh, p, p and, and And it somehow didn't sound formal when I read it in the galley proofs, even though shall is a rather formal word. We don't talk that way. Now, um, otherwise, I 
typically would say will, um, not meaning we will do it, but just uh, 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 it wasn't uh, somehow shall sounded right in the definitions the way that copywriter drummed it into my mind. Now in the in the book that I'm writing now with Oren, he doesn't like shall. It sounds very formal to him, and he comes from the generation closer to the to the audience that we're trying to reach here. So. Uh, uh, so uh, it must be that uh, shall is is a lot mo more. Uh, 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 it goes into it goes into my consciousness. I mean, it, you know, it goes into my head without being conscious that it's formal. Um, well, uh, with younger readers, it, it's different. So probably uh, will would 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 sound better to uh, to a um, uh, to a Jew, to a to a uh, young uh, what do you call it. Uh, um, a student of the of the 80s. <coughs> um, okay. Now, people, some people use arrows over over their vectors, um, vector T with instead of you know as a, just like a typographic convention, putting it in boldface, and that. Uh, uh, I suppose that can be helpful if you're used to it. I uh, physicists seem to like it, and and uh, and uh, yeah, it's all right. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't go. I mean, some people put put a, uh, a boldface tilde underneath every vector. There's all kinds of different symbols, and depending on what you're used to, uh, go for it and, and figure out what your audience is used to, what you like. Uh, here's uh, on, on this one. Um, this is a remark written in the in the margin by whoever did this paper. Um, uh, I say I know C J and P I J is confusing. Here, here it says suppose there is a vector P sub i and P, which is not in A sub n. Um, of course, this is that. Of course. Um, why call it P sub i? Why not call it P? Yeah. I know it's confusing. All right. Um, and again, here was the idea it says future tense. We will use the proof in to show or we it's uh, it's OK. Hey, we use a proof wouldn't sound too good here. Uh, by contrast, uh, we can use a proof, I suppose. How does uh, we prove this by contradiction? Uh, we prove this by contradiction. Yeah, that's rather good. Yeah. In fact, use a proof is a little bit. Uh, 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 wordy, isn't it? Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Um, here's somebody who loves colons. Lemma. <laughs> Proof. We prove each result separately. Colon. C contains an N. Colon. Define this as follows. Colon. This is uh, this is this is really a win for colon. Okay. So. Um, um, Oh no! Here, here they get into comma mode. <laughs> okay, right. Therefore, comma something something, comma and since comma by hypothesis comma and such comma we have. To. All right. Um, so uh, yeah, you can do without a few of these commas. Uh, why you have this and since in there? Um, Uh, I and I would probably throw the this this after you know since and since such and such by hypothesis it probably because otherwise it's too much it's just broken up too much and the person can re, can uh, can wait to find out that it's by hypothesis until after it's been stated. Um, okay, so can, you can get rid of the colons uh, 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 by just. Uh, uh, for example, this one isn't needed to isn't really needed. Um, OK, uh, this one I would definitely take out. Uh, we uh, we have such and such that that's part of the sentence. It, 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 it just completes the sentence and it doesn't have to have a colon in there. But this define it as follows. The colon is good there. I'm not against all colons, just some. And because uh, that's the end of a sentence, and and now we we're, we have a column. We're pointing to the we're pointing to the thing that that we're going to do as in the following way. Mm -hmm. Now, um, 
Uh, here's something that several people that several people did, and I, I wonder now. Look at this. It says QJ greater than QI, and an N greater than or equal J greater than I or greater than one. But the vector Q has been listed explicitly one, two, up to N. Now, does something strike you about this? Um, here we're seeing that we're seeing everything displayed left to right, one, two, up to N. But somehow, when we give this condition, we're displaying the, the subscripts in the opposite order. It's it violates you know uh, it, you know it would be much nicer I think to say Q I less than Q J. Uh, I mean unless you're into real dominance you know you like to always say greater than you don't like the word less than, um, and then you could you could rewrite this one uh, you know coming back that way in this in the order in which it's already been presented because then somebody can see that you're having a less than it relation in in there which you didn't want. Um, the definition was given in terms of, the, of, of greater than or equals. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't look like a, much of a violation until you got here and saw that they and saw, saw which way the ideas are going. So you so, so you get to choose the way to present a, an inequality uh, and uh, try to do it in, in a way that's, re, that's, 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 that's meaningful. Isn't the one less than and less than equal to n also s somewhat redundant? I mean. Yeah, that's that's true because uh, it's not really it's not it, yeah it's right we're not writing a computer program here we're 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 com communicating with an intelligent uh, being who would probably understand for some i less than j uh, because otherwise they're undefined yeah good point um, now uh, we several other people also did this we shall truly given any increasing vector like q it is always possible to add enough copies on now increasing is Probably not a a good term there, uh, because it's really only increasing partially. It's not it's it's not totally non-increasing, but it's it's not totally increasing either necessarily. Non-non-decreasing, non -non yeah. <laughs> I could call it a partial. I could get by with it by saying it's a partially increasing vector like Q. It's always possible to add enough copies or something like that. Okay, and there's a, well, quite a few quotes in here. Um, uh, uh, I, I guess I, if you want to, it's okay to, to have a few quotes, but maybe I would say any partially increasing without without putting them in quotes, like like you, and then I could say maybe enough in quotes uh, it to be a little cute, and then uh, and then say a, a partially increasing resultant vector. But to have three to have three cute things in quotes in, in one sentence is a little too cute. <clears throat> um, okay. Uh, I like the, um, uh, the 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 way this ended. Just for synchronization, it it, it, it keeps the audience, the reader. In, uh, this this proof seems to do a rather good job of keeping the keeping the track of where we are and so on. And, and says this completes the second part of our proof. Was a um, was a uh, a reasonable uh, way to uh, uh, to lock everything up. Um, if I were, by the way, in, inside tech, in the, I would have put a tie here and and there. Um, uh, and and here and stuff, you know. Um, uh, well, well one other comma I would I would leave out this comma. Therefore, therefore I wouldn't say therefore L K might be. I would just say therefore. Right. How do you feel about those double closing parentheses? Double closing two, parentheses. That's one. not too good. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, uh, that's. Um, um, it's it's uh, it, it was here it was here that, that that he introduced it so 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 we we got ready for it here uh, now um, yeah uh, remember definition one that's an interesting point here it says remember definition one it's a it's a it's a injunction to the reader remember definition one it's kind of a, uh, it's a little bit of break in style if you go from we to to you uh, but um, it seemed to it seemed to read fine. And then, since we have that, then we already we remember the word remember. So this this sounded okay. Now, um, the uh, but it is um, uh, it may be awkward to have parentheses inside a parenthesis to some to some audiences. It depends on uh, on the town. Uh, uh, what? I would I would uh, well since see it already did it did have a parenthesis in the definition. So I can't just leave off the 
if I were able to make the definition without parenthesis, that would be okay. But the only other solution, I think, is to take out the parenthesis around this remember definition one and make it a dash or something like that. Question? Or another sentence. Yeah, by. Is it standard form to, if you have nested parentheses like that, to make the outside one brackets? Oh, that's a, thank, I'm glad you asked that. There was a time when it was standard form to go from parenthesis to brackets to braces, and then I'm not sure what they did next. And then mathematicians started using braces and brackets for semantical purposes so that braces and brackets were different from parentheses. Like, you know, you use braces around a set and you use brackets for the greatest integer or whatever it is or for a subscript or something like that. Then Fortran came along and everybody realized that actually if you just have parenthesis, you can still figure it out, which matches with which in principle anyway. Okay. Now, however, typesetters, when they have parenthesis inside of parenthesis, will actually make a large parenthesis, will make this parenthesis a little bit bigger, and especially in a math formula, like if you're saying min of parenthesis f of x, g of x or something like that. These are slightly larger parenthesis that they'll typeset for that. But I would never go to min of bracket f of x, g of x, now unless I was writing something for third graders whose teacher had learned this whole convention and still thinks it's correct or something. But it's really gone. This whole idea of changing parenthesis to braces and brackets and so on is very obsolete and dangerous because semantics has now been, I mean, the world is short of delimiters and people are packing interesting meanings into delimiters these days. So different sizes of parenthesis are better than different kinds of parenthesis. I think very strongly about that. Another question? Yeah. With the remember definition 2 further up? Yeah. Isn't that a complete sentence? Definition 1. Should that be punctuated and capitalized and everything? No, because it's thrown in as a clause. I don't know. Yeah. If you could, if so, you would put the period here and then you have here. But I don't know. It's short enough that I think putting in, I don't know. Maybe I guess I don't like it as much as I did when I first saw it. But it didn't hurt me too much to see that in there. As I write, as I write, my handwritten manuscript, by the way, I have to confess that I don't enter my original draft. My very first creation is very rarely done at a computer. Can a professor of computer science confess not to using computers for everything? But then I type it after I, from my pencil draft, and I change it as I go. And one of the common changes I make is to remove parentheses. Things that sounded parenthetical to me when I first wrote them aren't very parenthetical or they don't sound right in parentheses when I read them at speed. And so putting too many things in parentheses can be a stylistic thing that will get very tiresome in a few pages. But having it once in a while is okay. I'm running out of time. Question? Yeah? Question? On previous paper. This one, before this one. Yeah, the yellow one. Yellow? Yeah. Well, they should be the yellow one. There is a for some I. Where are we? Let's see. Maybe it's not this one. No. You want to go? Yeah, right. For some I less than J. Where are we? Up a little. Up a little. Right there. Here. Right. Given any increasing vector like Q, it is also. Oh, for some I less than J. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, it's actually for some I and for some J such that they satisfy this condition. But how should one? I mean, is this okay? Yeah, I can. I could say for some I less than J. I think that's okay. But if I was, if I, you know, it's really for some I and some J such that I less than J. 
or for some i and j such that i less than j i but i i i'm i'm used enough to this maybe other people think it's going too fast now what about other type of more cumbersome formulas um i i'll uh, uh i i personally don't mind uh, stringing together um uh two equal signs in a row for example things like that if it happens something um, like for for i um i will say the ceiling function or cosine of j you know times whatever a big mess like that. then i would have to reformulate it yeah okay. uh, but, but but the main point is that i wanted to get this condition out in a meaningful way but but in a hurry i, I, I uh because i and j had because i and j were, were the were the were the undefined things in the preceding phrase i mean qi less than qj i and j aren't defined yet and so so i want to i want to get to the, i want to say as quick as possible what i and j are in some way that will that will that, that won't uh, confuse the the flow of the of the discussion and i think that does it for some i less than j for for a person who who uh, is is uh, sophisticated enough to to be interested in l of c and p in the first place uh <clears throat> All right. Now, I put the word that in here. Let us assume that. So, so, so. And so on. Sorry, but um now here you see they did it. Good. Let's assume that P is not a subset of A sub n. It worked. Um in other words, there is an n tuple. N is uh, in the wrong font here. Um uh would be uh better to uh put it in italics. Uh like the the letter n uh the word tuple is a kind of interesting it's a new word in english uh, been invented in the last 10 or 20 years i think um uh, and now here is really there exist indices i1 and i2 now this person was just trying to put me on here such that x sub i sub 1 is less than x sub i sub 2 um ah uh, okay. yes Uh, question about um, like, n tuple. If I say the nth component or so, yes, uh, is this like n is fine? Is is n italics dash th Roman or? or? Uh, yes, that is, actually uh, I would I I, I I typically keep it in Roman. I have it here in um, in italic, and uh, here's an interesting example. Where are we? Uh, yeah, boy, I got a lot to go here, but I'm going to going to hit really highlights. Let's see, where is the one? Ah, here, here we go. Ith component. Okay, here it was done with italics. Yeah, I, I would prefer that in Roman. And look, look at here the i plus first component. See how that works out? Now, now you, you can, you can do that if you raise the st. Otherwise, you'd have to. If the st was down the line, you have to put that in parentheses. Um, I have a question okay. about when you decide to. uh display things put them out separately uh display yeah. kind of equation when you just stick them in line right um there's yeah you know, it's displayed usually when it's something that needs to be seen as a uh it's 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 important to to be visualized uh in in its totality i guess we'll we'll talk more about that later um uh people are also display things when they're trying to make page format come out nicely and uh the, sometimes uh, the uh the editors of my book they when they were in the old days would uh uh when they were doing it by hand they would they would display some formula that that just had you know we sort of said and therefore x is a is a subset of something and and uh, x was all by itself it was just ridiculous but they needed to to, to fill out the you know i so i wrote a couple more sentences so that they so so that the page would would be all right Um here's an example of two things in a row that's worked by adding p k times to c. Notice that that does, doesn't work, right? Okay. Here's a let's divide the proof into two parts. First proving c and then end proving p. I like that. Thought that was good. Um uh let's see. Um uh here it says uh, can the the definition of lc p can be paraphrased as the subset of n to the n obtained by adding zero or more indistinct elements of p to all elements of c quote period okay now here i would have put the the period inside the quote i we talked about that um uh indistinct elements isn't the right word um possibly 
uh, the same elements, but I, that, that, that detracts from the paraphrase because the next sentence says the operative word here is zero. And so indistinct is just a, is, 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 is a being, being, being crazy, uh, being a strange word. It sounds like the operative word. So forget that. Zero or more elements, you know, that's a red herring uh, of pe the indistinct part. Uh, to all elements, the operative word here is zero. That's good. You know, it's a nice way to, to, to phrase it. I really like to, re to read a book written by this person in general. Um, and zero here, uh, the, the quote before the period, that's fine because that's the operative word. Zero itself is being quoted here. But somehow, when I'm, when I'm quoting a sentence, I was to put the period inside. Here it says, the lemma is half proved. I love that. Um, uh, just that uh, it's, uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> Um, and, it, and in fact, it was the trivial part of the of the lemma. But uh, okay. But anyway, I thought this was a re re it is left to show that P is contained in A sub n. Assume that P is not contained in A sub n. That is, assume there exists a. Oh, I probably would have put it that. Assume that there exists a vector of such an in P that is non-increasing. We will see that this leads to a contradiction. It's a very good transition paragraph. I said I would probably enjoy this. Uh, um, uh, that's future tense is okay if it's if it's used consistently. Um, uh, spelling is occasionally uh, I should say something about spelling argument here is, and uh, people is, is not being able to spell is not a sim symptom of being um, unintelligent. It's just uh, it's just one of the varieties of intelligence that some people have uh, and that they don't they don't see spelling errors and other people do and the people who do are offended by it. So so the people who who don't should learn how to cope with this by using spelling checkers and things like that. <laughs> Otherwise, it'll 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 uh, not, not be okay. Well, let's see. Um, it can be shown by contradiction that P is also contained in N. That's a pa that's a good example of passive voice, which we improve by making it active. A proof by contradiction shows that P is also contained in things like that. Okay. Um, since we know that such is contained in A sub N, we don't know it necessarily. I don't know why we know that piece L of P. It was never assumed that we don't know things like that. So how are we doing on time here? I'm running out of time. But, but I promise not to do this anymore. Um, after today. Well, let's see. What are the great? Here's somebody who wrote in all caps. Uh, this it sounded like, to me like he was shouting the whole thing. Um, <laughs> but, there, but we got into su subjective mood here. Suppose that there were some vector and so on, a subjunctive mood. Uh, that's um, uh, it doesn't. I I think uh, you don't have to be so subjunctive there, and you would say that there is some vector. Uh, <clears throat> Oh, there's so much to say about these about these things. I'll have to boil it down into a, into an, uh, a shorter presentation. Well, the the uh, uh, next, but I promise next week uh, that we will get off of that, even though I'm probably not half done yet. See you then.